Hey everybody, this is Craig Cottle, the director of Nature Reliance School, and you read that title right. I'm going to eat some maggots. Before I get to that, let's make sure that we take a look at the science of what's going on here and understand that this is not just something I'm doing just for the fun of it. Uh, in survival training and basically living throughout the world, people eat bugs, insects, uh, annelids, gastropods, all, all sort of, all these snails, leeches, maggots, and everything throughout the world. But let's not kid ourselves and understand that when they do that, they eat them cooked. And here's why. Because a lot of these critters, and let's take a look at annelids and gastropods. Annelids basically being ringed worms. Um, earthworms fall into that category. Leeches, I mean not leeches, but uh, yeah, leeches and uh, maggots fall into that category. If you look at them, you'll notice that they're ringed throughout the length of the, of the critter. Now, gastropods are things like snails and leeches that don't have those rings on them. Uh, because of the nature of the work that they do here on Earth, they have the opportunity to have parasites and bacteria on them. And so <clears throat> those that follow me regularly, particularly those that follow me and do edible and medicinal plants at our Nature of Reliance School classes, one of the things that always gets asked to me is what does so-and-so taste like? For example, what does uh, a dandelion taste like? And my standard answer for any time anybody asks me that question is a dandelion tastes like a dandelion. And if you ask me what a well, there's a poplar tree right there. What does a poplar leaf taste like? And I'm not saying that's edible. I'm just saying, if it, what does a poplar leaf taste like? Well, it tastes like poplar leaf, okay? The reason I do that is because if you're going to eat anything from the outdoors, anything, well, if you're going to eat anything in the world and you try to equate it to what it is that is already in your diet, uh, I understand why you're doing that because you're trying to just make sure that it's okay. That's Part of the evolutionary process we're trying to make sure that what's going on there is exactly what's going on and we're okay with it so but the fact of the matter is dandelions don't taste like your spring fresh mix that you get at kroger's actually in my opinion they taste better they have more taste in them uh, bugs leeches maggots snails uh, grasshoppers all these things are the same way if you try to say what does a grasshopper taste like uh, you're not going to find anything that tastes like a grasshopper uh, because a grasshopper is a grasshopper. Now, here's the other thing that is in very important when we discuss these things. Maggots in particular, because they feed off of so many different things in our environment, um, uh, as well as a grasshopper, for example. Whatever it is eating is what it's going to taste like. So if I'm eating a maggot, for example, and it's been feeding off of a dead skunk, that maggot is going to have the taste of a dead skunk. And I don't care how much I cook it, it's going to taste like a dead skunk. Okay, So I've never done that, but from experience of eating maggots before, I can tell you this with certainty. Now, here's how this all got started. Uh, basically what happened was we went on, just a, my family and I just went on a little trip, and we picked up some pawpaws and chestnuts. And in so doing, we took them home. We made some pawpaw bread, and these are American chestnuts, which basically are going to, you know, die off. If you don't know what the American chestnut in the store, you need to check that out. Um, we always pick up American chestnuts every year, plant them in the appropriate soils in, in their native area where we find them, as well as we eat some of them. So, but when we brought these pawpaws and these chestnut home, some of them had maggots in them. Now, the chestnuts have weevils in them, which are another ringed worm and the pawpaws had maggots in them. So we made the bread and then we realized that the maggots were in there and you know, which forced us to consider it. I mean, I do this stuff all the time, but it's not like my wife to go around eating maggots on a regular basis. So she was kind of freaked out about it, but we sit down and I kind of explained the science of it behind it all to her. So in essence, what we had was a bunch of maggots that taste like pawpaws. Now, what I've done is I've collected some of them and I want to make sure that I point out it's not real likely that they have a lot of parasites on it. It's just possible. And so I'm going to cook them. I'm not stupid. I'm not going to take a big handful of maggots and just pop them in my mouth. In a survival situation, if I didn't have the ability to make a fire, I would do that without hesitation. Here's why. Here's the other thing about maggots in particular that's important to understand. 
maggots, let's say a maggot is feeding on an animal and uh, you pull them off, basically what happens, the way the maggot, uh, what, a, what a maggot does is it feeds on meat protein, for example. And if you haven't ever studied the usefulness of maggots in medical research and how, you know, if I, if, like if I have a, a finger that's not working properly because it's not getting good blood flow and it's got dead uh, flesh on it, then I can put maggots on my hand and it help eat the dead flesh. They're actually very beneficial to, uh, in medical settings. Um, well, that said, a maggot will take meat protein and as it takes it into its body, it basically transfers that meat protein into fatty tissue as well as amino acids. And so whenever you're eating a maggot that is taking in meat protein, it's basically, by the time you eat it, it's basically fat and amino acids. So fat in a survival situation, I can't explain to you enough how important that is. You've got to get a lot of nutrition there. So with that said, what I'm going to do is I just brought a jet boil just so we can see how this works. I didn't build a fire, but if I were in a survival situation, I'd build a fire, maybe put a rock next to the fire and get it heated up, put the maggots on the rock, and then I could then cook them there because these things are so small, you're not going to stick them on a stick or anything like that. If you had a container, you could also put them in boiling water. Basically, these parasites, the bacteria in there, it's not going to survive, you know, uh, some of my research is indicating 130 degrees, so even 130 degrees above, uh, all the parasites that are in there are going to be dead anyway. So you could take a, um, a container of any sort with water, put a bunch of maggots in it, cook it up to its boiling, which is a lot higher than 130 degrees, and basically you're going to cook all the bacteria and the bad stuff off of it, and then you're going to have basically a soupy material that you could eat for sustenance. And again, I say this all the time too. If you don't think you could ever do that, then you've never been hungry in your life. Because I'm going to tell you a secret. I've been hungry. As I've said many times, uh, I did a couple of 30-day sabbaticals where I went out with nothing more than a knife and literally lived off the land in the middle of a wilderness. Okay, And when in so doing, I discovered that when you get hungry, you'll eat a lot of stuff that you wouldn't normally eat before. Uh, I'm not saying that to be cool. I'm just saying that to be a fact. And so if you're uh, can think, man, there's no way in the world, I'd have, no matter what happened in this world, I'd never eat a maggot, then you've simply never been hungry. Not hungry like I'm talking starving hungry, really starving. So with that said, I'm going to fire up this jet boil. We're going to cook these maggots up, and I'm going to eat them. So yeah, I've, got, I've just got a jet boil set up with a pan. But here's what we did. Here's, here's a pawpaw. If you don't know what a pawpaw is, um, it's a fruit that grows in the Appalachians, Appalachian Mountains. And when you open one up, it looks like that. Um, it's real tasty. I love them. Uh, they're fantastic. Um, uh, latter part of September, 1st of October start is when you'll see pawpaws hitting the ground. You want to wait till they fall off the tree to get them. But here's what happened. These pawpaws were laying on the ground and uh, we picked them up, brought them home. And then these are American chestnuts. So if you don't know how cool it is that I actually have American chestnuts, and I'm not talking about Chinese chestnuts, I'm talking about American chestnut trees, that's another thing to look into. So keep coming back. If this is your first time visiting with me, Craig Cottle Nature Alliance School, and then keep coming back because we talk about nature and survival and preparedness and tactical stuff all the time. Now, with that said, um, uh, we got these maggots because they are actually crawling around our kitchen counter and here's what we've got. I've got them in this pan right here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this on camera real easy or not. I'll tell you what, I'll change the angle of the camera so you can see these in the pan. So here's the pan and here's the maggots that are in the pan. You can see that they are not moving around a whole lot because they're not, I'm gathering, they're not liking this pan. It's cold. But you can see they're moving around in there. Those are your maggots. So I should clarify, there's some maggots and weevils in there. Weevils that we got out of the American chestnuts and some maggots we got out of the pawpaws. Uh, again, they're both ringed worms, uh, meaning they have the rings that go along the length of the animal or the critter itself. So um, again, survival situation, I have no fire at all. I'll eat those, uh, take the, taking the risk that that if I, I'm running out of energy, I don't have any energy, I'm starving, I'm literally starving to death, then I'll eat those things. Um, I would appro uh, uh, 
appreciate being able to find them on something that is something I would eat. So I'm, again, I don't, I wouldn't pull them off a dead animal and eat them like that because they're almost assuredly going to have bacteria on them. But with that said, if I have the ability to cook them, even if I can just put them on a hot rock in the sun, but if I could build a fire, then I would build a fire, put them on a rock, let them sear on the rock, and then just eat them like that. And again, just put them in boiling water. What I'm going to do here in the interest of time, so I don't have to build a fire today, because uh, I don't have that much time today. I got to get back and get some other stuff done. I've just got a jet bull system with this pan. I'm going to put them on this pan and then I'm going to eat them. So how long does it take to fix maggots? Not very long at all. So we can put this pan right on top of the flame and Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get the camera so you can see these things and what happens to them. Now before I do this, I want to make sure that I'm clear. Because this is important to me. It may not be important to you, but it's important to me. I don't take the taking of life uh, shallow. I put a lot of importance in it. And it doesn't matter if that is a human life or a maggot. Uh, I'm not gonna ask these maggots permission to take them and utilize them as food. However, uh, I'm not doing this for fun. I'm not doing this because this is cool or funny. Um, I, I gather I might get a lot of views on it. I'm not doing it for that purpose. I'm just doing it for the sake of teaching people and it is sustenance for me. I can utilize it for sustenance. So um, with that said, anytime you're gonna take the life of anything and utilize it for food, at least consider how important it is that that, that particular animal, insect, gastropod, annelid, human, how much of a value they have, even maggots. Maggots play a very important role in nature and so I'm not necessarily taking them just for fun. Uh, I'm putting a lot of thought into this and I'm not doing it haphazardly. So with that said, I am going to show you what happens to these and I'm not doing it because it's funny. I'm doing it because I want you to see how this happens. So we'll get this jet boil lit. What happens to these as they get on the flame is they go from moving to where they're not moving anymore. They're gonna move to try to get away. And again, I'm not doing this for fun, you all. Uh, I don't take the life of anything without pretty serious consideration. But they'll move a lot and you'll see some of those were moving, but now they're not moving anymore. They're already so hot that they're for the most part dead. So what I'm gonna do is just continue to heat them up Move them around some if I can. So what happens if, you, if you've noticed, they went from, they were curled up, they started moving around, they curled up real tight, and now they're spread back out and they're not moving at all. Well, that means they're basically dead. They're not basically dead, they are dead. Now they're starting to brown, and if you look closely, and I don't know if you can see this on camera, if you look real closely, you'll start seeing it bubble, seeing them bubble on the upper side of themselves. So now they're cooked all the way through and I'm gonna take them off and I'm gonna eat them. So there they are in the pan. And this pan is hot. So I'm just gonna scrape them off. They're actually black on one side. So there they are in my hand. And there they are in my mouth. So what does a maggot taste like? It tastes like a charred maggot. Um, again, these came off pawpaw, so there's a hint of the pawpaw inside the maggot itself. Uh, with that said, because they're so small, it's so easy for them to get charred like really quick. And so you wanna make sure that again, you're cooking them all the way through if at all possible and they're going to cook so fast that they're going to char up and you might just cook off any nutrition that you were going to get out of them anyway. So if you're going to do it, cook them till you see that bubbling coming through the, the, the maggot itself and then you've got them cooked all the way through. 
So again, uh, that is how to eat maggots. And uh, again, it's not something I want you to run out and just start cooking up maggots. Although people all over the world already do this uh, all the time. Matter of fact, during the Civil War, there were a lot of times where troops would get hardtack and there'd be maggots in the hardtack. Well, it's maggots, it's hard, uh, maggots that were on hardtack. So it's basically hardtack maggots. <laughs> and they would use that as a spread on the hardtack. Um, they would just take the maggots and spread them on the bread and use it like, a, like any other spread, like a butter or a, or a peanut butter or something of that nature. It was just maggot butter. So that sounds gross, doesn't it? But it's not. I mean, it's just uh, we have a culture in this country where that's disgusting, and really, uh, I think it's disgusting to be eating processed foods. That's, I, I've been put into the habit of eating processed foods. That's why I'm overweight. Um, I would be much better off finding maggots that have been eating pawpaws, eating them, than I would be eating processed junk and garbage that's basically poison. So consider that. And if you have any questions, if you have anything you want to add to it, then put it in the comments below. If you think I'm disgusting, then put that in the comments below. If you think I'm cool as heck, then put that in the comments below. Either way, uh, give us a thumbs up if you like this video, if you found it to be informative please consider subscribing to our channel. We really appreciate people that subscribe and uh, we do everything we can to put out good information that's scientifically based, statistically based, and continue to help people become more self-reliant. And as always at Nature Reliance School, what we always say is come on, join in, and let's learn together.